your nervous system, which includes your brain, your spinal cord, and all the nerves in your body, is a communication system. The cells of the nervous system that do the communicating are called neurons. They send electrical signals from one place to another, and then neurons communicate with each other in the synapse. When one neuron is communicating with another neuron, that is called a synapse. In England, they pronounce it synapse. And this is a chemical signal that is sent from one neuron to another neuron. So the word synapse means that one cell is communicating with another cell. And sometimes the word synapse is used to refer to the place where this communication happens. And sometimes the word synapse is used to refer to the process, which I'm going to show you in this video. The neuron that sends the signal is called presynaptic, pre meaning before. And the neuron that receives the signal is called postsynaptic, that is post is after, and the chemicals that are passed from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron are called neurotransmitters. And there are hundreds of different kinds of neurotransmitters. When a neuron fires, an electrical signal travels from one end of the neuron to the other, and then some neurotransmitters are released into a space called the synaptic gap. There are many different kinds of neurotransmitter chemicals including dopamine, serotonin, glutamate, norepinephrine, GABA, and acetylcholine. The firing of a neuron, which is called an action potential, causes the neuron to become more positively charged. That causes the release of neurotransmitters. The tra neurotransmitters pass through a gap where some of them will disperse, but some of them will end up binding with other chemicals on the receiving neuron, the postsynaptic neuron, has chemicals called receptors. When a signal travels through a neuron, for example, a bee stings you on the toe, an electrical signal is created which travels up your leg to your spinal cord. And when you reach the spinal cord, the action potential will cause the release of the neurotransmitters, which are stored in little bags called vesicles. The vesicles break open, the neurotransmitter is released into the synaptic gap or the synaptic cleft, and then some of those neurotransmitters will bind with receptors. The receptors, the receiving chemicals, are named after the neurotransmitters. So for example, the neurotransmitter dopamine has many different chemical receptors. They are called D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, and serotonin, the neurotransmitter, the chemical name for serotonin is 5-HT. And so the receptors are called 5-HT1A, 5-HT1B, 5-HT2, and so on. So the synapse is where neurotransmitters are released. And then they will, some of the molecules will bind with receptors on a receiving neuron. And when that happens, a chemical reaction occurs and then the receiving neuron, the postsynaptic neuron, it might cause it to fire to create an action potential, but it might inhibit it. So sometimes these neurotransmitter chemicals are excitatory, they excite an action potential, and sometimes they're inhibitory, they inhibit a signal. When the neurotransmitter is released from one neuron, some of the molecules will attach or bind with the receptors, and that will influence the receiving cell to either fire or to be inhibited from firing. Now, the neurotransmitter molecules then have to be cleaned out of the synapse. Uh, one thing that happens is some of the molecules will simply disperse into the fluid. Some of the molecules will be taken back in to the cell that they came, they came from, that is called reuptake. There are little transporter molecules that will bring some of the neurotransmitter back into the cell it came from to replenish uh, the neuron. And then some of the molecules will be recycled by enzymes. So when the neurotransmitters are released, that could signal the receiving cell to fire, to create an action potential, to send the signal on to a different place in the nervous system or in the brain. 
The neurotransmitter chemicals then need to be cleaned out of the synapse, and some of them will disperse, some of them will be recycled with enzymes, and some will be taken back in by transporter molecules that will bring the neurotransmitter back into the cell that it came from. That's called reuptake. Here we see an illustration of reuptake. The little red balls represent neurotransmitter molecules, and some of them are taken back into the cell where they came from. This is called a process called reuptake, and that is a process that's very important because there are lots of medicines that inhibit reuptake. For example, medicines for depression, antidepressants, like Prozac and Paxil and Zoloft and so on. These uh, medicines inhibit the reuptake of ser serotonin. And since serotonin is being inhibited, the reuptake is being inhibited, that means there's more serotonin present in the synapse in order to stimulate the receptors. Here's an illustration of the whole process. The presynaptic neuron releases a neurotransmitter. Some of that neur neurotransmitter will bind with receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, the receiving neuron, and then the neurotransmitter molecule will either disperse, be recycled by enzymes, or built through reuptake will be brought back into the cell that it came from. And that is a synapse. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video. I'm Professor Bruce Heinrichs. Thank you so much for your interest in this topic. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, Brucey, and look at some of my other videos. I have lots of videos on psychology and on neuroscience. Bye, everybody.